What's going on everybody, Respawn Gentleman here. So the new update for Dark Alliance was just released earlier today and there's an absolute ton of stuff to go over, so let's get right into it. Now, if you've been playing Dark Alliance or been following it at all, you'll know that the last update we got was like four months ago, so we've been waiting forever. Now, I thought it was originally just going to be the free, the second free DLC, which still never got released, but instead they give us the paid DLC, which is Echoes of the Blood War expansion. So let's kind of dive right into this. So right here it says that the Echoes of the Blood War expansion is here. It introduces the Tiefling Warlock Arala, a new playable character ready to join your party, as well as two new dungeons to explore, which I'm going to be doing a video on the new character as well as the new dungeons. I'll have that coming out soon, so definitely stay tuned for that. But kind of right here, it goes into more about it. It says Dark Alliance expansion includes one new playable character and two new challenging dungeons with six levels total. Expand your Dark Alliance experience with the Blood War. So it talks about Arala right here. You know, it's a Tiefling Warlock focused on spell casting and crowd control. You've got the Abandoned Minds Dungeon. Um, and then you have the Spawn of Yinagu uh, as well. Like I, they kind of were announced um, a little bit before this, like a few weeks ago. I have a video linked on that uh, below um, about kind of the achievements that they got updated. So we had some of this information already, but it's finally here. Um, real quick, before we get into the patch notes as well, um, if you bought the deluxe edition of the game, you'll already have the DLC and you can play it right away. Now, if you got the standard version, then uh, you can still get the DLC for $20 and gives you all this stuff as well. But let's get right into the patch notes and see everything that they updated and fixed and changed and all that good stuff. All right, so we'll start off with AI fixes. Now, I'm only going to go over a couple of the fixes in each of these because there's a ton. So uh, if you want to know more, I'll have the patch notes linked in the description so you can check those out. But right here for AI fixes, uh, kind of the main two that I think are the important ones here are fixed cultist acolytes occasionally standing still for extended periods of time in combat. And then Knowles will now approach a player character that has gr the grappled debuff. So before um, those were a problem and now they're not. <laughs> so that, those things for the AI have been fixed. Next up is audio issues. And both of these, it says uh, added missing combat barks and character slash mission banter lines throughout the title. And then added missing footstep sound effects on PlayStation 4 throughout the title. So they fixed some audio issues. Um, if you're still experiencing audio issues, let me know down in the comments below. So next up is balance. And this one, they increased the invincible buff duration after being revived. So now you won't, you know, die like immediately after being revived. And then they also increased Kelvin's boss health again, because he's still, in my opinion, I mean, I haven't tested out the new update, so I don't know if there's any better ones or not. But before the update, Kelvin was still one of the best ways to farm legendary gear. So they made him more spongy, I guess. <laughs> Next up is localization. Now this one, they just fixed some replies in the French dialogue that were missing. So uh, if you play the game in French, you can now hear a couple of extra lines. Next up is matchmaking and networking. So the two that I think are the most important on this one are fixed a rare issue in which uh, players could not join multiplayer sessions on PlayStation 5. And then also fixed player characters remaining stuck in a revive animation when the player and host get teleported during the revive process in multiplayer. So now um, if you've experienced that issue, that should no longer be happening. Hopefully um, there's you got to take all of their fixes with a grain of salt because a lot of times the things they fix don't actually get fixed. But let's I'll check out all the other stuff. The next up is performance and stability. So the ones that I think are the most important here are fixed crashes while loading into Verbeek Jamboree Act 1 on PlayStation 4 and multiplayer. So that shouldn't crash anymore. Uh, there's another one uh, right here where it says fixed a rare crash uh, for all of the players in the boss encounter of the Crystal Rates Act 3. Um, I personally never experienced that, but if you did, hopefully that boss fight will not crash your game anymore and the other one is reduce the likelihood of a rare out of memory crash on xbox one and playstation 4 consoles now i have experienced that and uh it sucks <laughs> so hopefully that doesn't happen anymore so next up we have user interface and user experience now i'm only going to cover a couple of these because most of them involve like spelling errors or uh elements staying on the screen after they shouldn't be like names and health bars and stuff like that but the ones that I follow the most important are this one right here is fixed a rare issue in which character progression would reset back to level one. I actually have had several people comment and mention that that has happened to them and it completely sucks. Um, another one is fixed revives by short rests, failing to fully replenish health in multiplayer. Um, I haven't necessarily heard anybody talking about that, but I can understand that would uh, make me not very happy <laughs> either. <laughs> 
Uh, and then we have updated the conditions menu to include more conditions. So there should be kind of a better explanation of the conditions, um, but that's kind of the main things for this particular section. So next they talk about abilities, moves, and feats fixes. So the first one on here is fixed dual edge strike, not reducing cooldown timers when executed from Aether Slash. Um, another one on here that I find is kind of important is this one. It says fixed drist being able to use their ultimate multiple times if near an enemy with a globe of invulnerability. And then the last one on here is fixed enemies uh, regaining their full health from player character abilities. So those should be fixed as well as these others. Again, I'll have the full patch notes linked in the description if you want to check them out. Um, but hopefully those will be fixed now. So next is cinematics. And for that, they fixed players not being able to skip cinematic if a new level is selected during five second countdown to start a mission. And they also fixed the effect of Verbeek Trap ability being delayed if the user is aiming when they walk through it. So now uh, the, v the Verbeek Traps should activate when you walk through it, uh, no matter what, supposedly. We'll test that out. So next up we have conditions and the two that I find the most important here are conditions no longer deal damage multiple times per second depending on the number of players in the session after enemies are afflicted in multiplayer. So um, that kind of sucks <laughs> because that means that you know with that before you were able to kind of damage enemies a lot faster so they've kind of slowed that down. I think personally that's a bit of a nerf but you know it's hopefully hopefully that doesn't hurt it too much. Uh, the other one which I'm happy about is charmed enemies now deal friendly fire damage. So before when they were charmed, they wouldn't actually hurt uh, the people that are around them, which kind of sucked. So now it does work. So, hey, that's good. <laughs> Next up is death, revive and force respawn fixes. So the ones that I feel like are most important here are fixed player characters taking a long time to be responsive after being revived. So this one, basically, you got revived and you couldn't move your character or do anything with them. Uh, which is super frustrating so that should be fixed now for anybody who had that issue next is fixed allies being revived by only briefly holding down the revive button so uh, this one kind of sucks because uh, when that glitch happens you can basically like press the button or hold it down for a shorter amount of time and your ally would be revived but now you have to hold it for the full duration so it takes a little bit longer so that kind of sucks and the last one on here is fix the camera moving through the terrain when forced respawning so now you don't have to you know look through the map <laughs> anymore so that should be fixed the next up is enemies and bosses on this one they fixed the verbeek chef boss dealing damage at the start of attack animations instead of you know when the attack actually connects so that's great um because that's super frustrating you know you try to dodge or block or do something and you still get hit when you shouldn't have been so yeah that's extremely frustrating um, and then they fixed player characters becoming stuck on invisible collision after defeating verbeeks before they throw their harpoon so, um, yeah, I've actually experienced that a few times and it's super annoying and then you can't move and it's just, it's a frustrating experience. So hopefully that doesn't happen anymore. Next up is gear set fixes. So they fixed the dragon's bane set bonuses, giving incorrect damage increases. So they should be the correct numbers. Now I don't know if they're higher or lower than what they originally were, but, um, now they're showing the correct numbers. Then they fixed low resolution textures on caddy breeze, common and uncommon cold resistance helms. I don't really know anybody who uses those because the resistance gear just sucks in general they have like no benefits <laughs> to using them um at all and then they also fixed caddy breeze battle hammer princess bracers being stretched and misaligned so this is more kind of the lower two are more just like visual fixes um so that's eh, you know i don't really care too much about it not being 100 percent. but then again i'm not a big graphics person so there's that so next up is hazards. Now this first one I'm personally upset about because this is one of my favorite things to do. So player characters can no longer walk in between spike traps. So I think they're referring to the spike traps that go up and down. And uh, before you are actually able to dodge through them and not take any damage whatsoever, which is fantastic. So that may have been fixed. I will definitely test that out in my testing video because I loved doing that. It made getting through the spike traps that actually move so much easier. And in some cases, a lot faster to get through certain sections. The other thing I talked about is fix the lightning runes hazard active window persisting after the explosion effect occurred. Next up, they talk about level design and art fixes. So I'm not going to cover all of these. There's a whole bunch of them in here, mostly related to the Crystal Wraiths mission and the Crystal and Dreams missions. Uh, but the ones that I'm going to cover are the ones I have definitely experienced. So there's this one right here. Fix the player character sliding indefinitely when stationary after moving. I have experienced this. It's absolutely hilarious when it happens, but I'm glad that they fixed it so it shouldn't happen anymore. 
Then they put uh, fixed issues of misaligned ladder climbing animations throughout the title, which again, another funny one that should be fixed now, but there'd be times where you climb a ladder and if you like turn your camera, you're like five feet away from the ladder and it was absolutely hilarious. So the next one here is fixed roots not being destroyed when hit by Caterpie's ranged attacks. Now, I've had this happen an absolute ton of times and it's super annoying that I like I try to hit it with the ranged attack and it doesn't get destroyed and I have to do it like multiple times for it to finally get destroyed. So I'm really happy about this one because Katie Bree is my main character um, at the moment. And yeah, I use ranged attacks like constantly. And the last one I'm going to cover is fixed player characters falling through the map if another player is in the same respawn location. So um, I haven't personally experienced this one, but uh, that would be extremely annoying. So hopefully that doesn't happen to you if you have experienced it and it should be fixed now. So next up, we have merchant fixes. So they fixed paying full gold price when unlocking new usables while the persuasive feat is unlocked. So now um, those should have a lower gold cost when you have that feat. Although, honestly, gold is super easy to come by and uh, you'll have absolute tons of it and, and never really need to use it after you upgrade stuff. So the persuasive feats kind of useless, but they fixed it. So now it's working. The next up, they talk about movement. And with this one, they fixed Wolfgar's backwards evade animation popping after dodging to the sides. So now he will backwards dodge correctly and not have some kind of weird jump around that he does. So next up is progression. In this one, they fixed a progression blocker in which the objective eliminate the cultists to stop their sacrifices ritual would sometimes not be able to be completed in Crystal and Dreams Act 2. So now if you've had that bug, you should be able to get through that again and uh, you can keep playing that mission if you so choose. So next up is tutorial fixes. Now, I know that most people do not play through the tutorial, but it's mostly um, like, you know, perform a four hit combo objective now counts on all combos and you know performing a jump is now counted as a jump during the tutorial um like i said this this isn't really important because nobody really plays this tutorial anyway and there's there serves no purpose other than you know learning the basics of your character but yeah they, they made some of those fixes and the last thing they talk about on here is vfx fixes and so this one they fixed candy breeze ultimate attack arrows remaining stuck in midair after touching an enemy or object um, I've seen this a couple times, and again, it just kind of makes me laugh. So <laughs> that's fixed now, and I no longer have funny moments. But uh, the other one that I want to cover is fix the secondary VFX explosion and damage area on the Frost Giant's grind swipe attack uh, by being out of sync. So uh, sometimes they do the grind swipe, and the damage and uh, explosion would happen not correctly or not at the right time, and it'd throw people off. So that should be fixed now as well. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more Dark Alliance content, make sure to like and subscribe. You can also check out some of my other videos like the one YouTube recommends right over there. And if you want to help support this channel, you can check out the support links in the description below. Thanks for watching.